Hey everyone, welcome back to the lab. In this video, we're gonna be talking about how to build simple web polling with HTMX and include some examples. So I recently built a side project that heavily relies on HTMX polling. In this post, we'll dive into how it works, examples of how to implement polling with HTMX, and provide some ideas for how you might use this in your own projects. All right, so let's start off with an overview of my project and how it uses HTMX. So I like building side projects with HTMX. So naturally I built my latest side project with thousand checkboxes with it. We'll start off with an overview of how it works to give some context for how HTMX polling is being used and thus a better idea of how you might actually use this in your own project. So how 1000 checkboxes works. Basically you go to it, it loads a page of 1000 checkboxes and then you check some boxes, it syncs those boxes to the server and then everyone that's on the page um, their page will pull to get the latest updated checkboxes. And that's how we were syncing these 1000 checkboxes globally. And under the hood, it's using HTMX polling. That's why we're actually, you know, writing this post to get those latest checkboxes um, every few seconds. And we're using HTMX to, to minimize the amount of HTML we send on each poll. So we're only pulling the part that is actually changing, um, but also using it because I like HTMX and wanted to see if I could do it. So let me just show you what this looks like in action. Okay, so I have um, a thousand checkboxes.xyz pulled up on each screen and we can see that it's the same here. And then I'm just gonna kind of show you what it looks like when I start checking on one side. And so it's slowly gonna sync across to um, the other one over here. It's doing polling to do this. And then I can um, come over here and put boxes on this side and we can see that it's, it's syncing um, over to the other page as well. And so the thing that's doing the syncing is each of these are using HTMX to pull and get the latest um, values out. Um, and so that's how they're getting the latest checkbox grid. So you can try it out yourself at 1000checkboxes.xyz. You can also learn a little bit more about the tech stack design decisions and challenges of using HTMX. HTMX is not for everything um, here in its introductory post. And then also if you're interested in the full project source code, I've made it available slightly sanitized so you don't get my like, you know, API keys um, here and my example repo, which is available to Hominion's members. Okay, simple HTMX polling. So now that we know how the project works, we can dive into how it actually is using HTMX for polling here. And so the general idea is I'm using the idea of an HTMX interactive island. And so um, the page itself is really just a multi-page application because it's just a dumb web page, right? It's not really doing anything. So we can just use an MPA, build it simply and get it to do that. Now the part where it a, needs a little bit more dynamism is this checkbox grid because we are going to be reloading this a lot. Um, and so for this, we've created an interactive island with HTMX. And so this bit is what's actually going out and saying, hey, refresh me, getting the extra stuff, um, our markdown back and replacing itself here. But everything else on the page can stay the same, doesn't need to change or anything because you know, it's it's not actually doing anything. And so yeah, the page is served as an MPA with a checkbox grid being an interactive island. And an interactive island is like essentially a self-contained component that can re-render itself when it needs to. And so that's this checkbox grid. We know that it needs to re-render itself because it will be dynamic. Um, and so it knows how to do that. I like this interactive island paradigm for HTMX. Um, componentization, so like how to build components with HTMX, because I find it allows you to leverage the power of HTMX while minimizing the extra complexity of using it. And when I see a lot of people struggling um, with HTMX, I think they're trying to take the approach that like a lot of spas do, where they build these like really atomic components um, and they, they, they're basically trying to build the way that they would build in like React um, or view or svelte with these like very tiny components and putting them together, which I think makes sense from a rendering standpoint. But the problem is they often get carried away with this idea of HTMX where everything can go grab its own data. And so they're giving each atomic thing an ability to go and re-render itself with HTMX. But then they have an explosion of complexity because now they need an endpoint to serve all of these things and stuff like that. And so a way that I find is better is to, yes, you can build atomic components, but only implement HTMX in basically a more coarse grained componentization. It's like a larger thing. Um, and so that way that thing can go refresh itself and basically get the new props, if you will. Um, and on the server can put those components together into that thing. And so this is a good way to get all the power of HTMX, but really not have that 
um, explosion of complexity because you're trying to build an endpoint for like every button. Anyway, that's how I think about it. Um, and you can learn more about that here in this uh, post here. So to set up polling with HTMX, we are going to be using the HX trigger attribute to configure when our component decides to refresh itself. HX trigger basically is like, how do I know that I need to trigger? Usually it's going to have like a default of like, if you press it on a button or you submit a form, like that's like a default trigger. Um, but we can tell it like, actually, I want you to maybe like wait for an event. And in this case, we're going to say, hey, we want the trigger to be when you load, but we're going to load you with a delay, which effectively is creating a polling scenario because on load starts the timer and then it will refresh itself. And then we're reloading the whole um, component again. And so on load on a timer, refresh itself, stuff like that. Okay, and so I've got a explanation of the component and what it does here. And then I have the code down here that you can look at. And so basically what the component does is it gives itself an ID, which is checkbox grid. This is very important um, so that you can identify the single thing on the page that you want. There's other ways to identify things, but I love IDs, especially if it's a unique thing on the page. So we're using checkbox grid as, a, as an ID, and then it's going to target itself with HX target, which basically says, you know, when HTMX gets the um, return markdown from the server, this is what I want you to target with it. I want you to put it uh, over there inside my checkbox grid. And then it's gonna specify what URL to hit to reload itself. For me, um, this is just my base URL. I like, similar to Interactive Islands, I like to make my endpoints very simple. So there's one entry point per page, and then you can use targeting um, on that using uh, HX target to tell it which specific component on this page you would like to re-render. And I find this makes, again, endpoint wrangling much easier, really lowers the complexity level and makes HTMX um, much simpler while still getting the power uh, out of it. So this says, hey, go send a GET request to um, the URL here, and that's how you know how to reload yourself. And then it's going to set the trigger to reload itself on a five second delay after loading. And here we're using HX trigger for that. We say on load, you need to trigger yourself, but put a delay of five seconds in there. Um, and then of course, this component has all of the checkboxes inside of it. So it is re-rendering every single time all 1000 checkboxes, which, you know, maybe not optimal, but uh, that's how it works. And then so this is what the front end is doing, right? And then what the back end is doing is, you know, I have this kind of compound endpoint. And so what it does is it it's looks at the request and it says like, hey, do you have a target for me? And it's going to read out that, oh, you're looking for the checkbox grid component. I know how to render that. And then what it's going to do is going to re-render the full HTMX component, which again is going to basically have all the same stuff in here. Um, but the only thing that changes really is the, the updated checkboxes. So that's how you get like, oh, these things have been checked by someone else. I'm going to get those over here. And then it's going to return that whole component. And then HTMX knows um, because we, we set this target guy that when it returns that, I want you to put that um, in this ID. And so that's a lot of talking. Um, here is the code. It's like so simple on the front end, right? Uh, here's just the list. I am omitted it because there's like, you know, 998 more check, check boxes. Um, but really, it's just a big div. It's got the ID. It's got the HX get, got the target, got the trigger, and then it's got its, you know, tailwind classes. And that's, that's really it. And then to prove this to you, let me uh, open this guy up. And let's look at the network tab first. And so we can see that like, Every five seconds, it is um, it is making a new request to itself to get the latest checkboxes out. And then if we inspect this guy, we can see that um, we have my div with checkbox grid, hx get, hx target, etc. So this is what's actually powering um, this web page here. Okay, so how to use HTMX polling in your own projects? So we've gone over a simple example of web polling with HTMX, but I want to provide some ideas for how you might use this in your own projects. So the first way you might use this is to refresh on a timer. And in this project, I have a naive endless poll because I know that I want the page to pull the latest info regularly forever. In this case, I, there's no way, well, there's ways to know, but my dumb front end doesn't know um, if it can stop polling because it's always possible someone's changed a checkbox. So it's just going to keep polling, you know, forever. And now this is useful in some scenarios, like often when someone is waiting on something um, and you don't know if more information is going to come out. Um, usually like dashboards, like maybe a Datadog dashboard or something like that is common if someone's waiting there 
um, looking for more data or something like that. But this is often very like wasteful because you're continuously refreshing even if the underlying data has not changed. And so you're possibly sending like a lot of payloads, a lot of server load, et cetera, um, for very little actual user impact because nothing's changed. This is useful in some scenarios, but often is not what you want in an actual production app. So the next thing that you might wanna do instead of what we've done here is to maybe do something like pull till ready. And this is gonna be a more common scenario for pulling itself. And it's often used when a resource takes a while to reach a terminal state, like maybe it requires background processing. This is a job and the user's like waiting there until like, I don't know, their videos processed or their image gets its edits or like the AI thing, you know, returns its, you know, smart response to your query or something. These are examples where you might want to do this um, because a user is waiting there expecting new information, but they don't know when it happens. And so they're just going to sit there. And so it's nice to to check for them instead of having them refresh the page themselves. And in this case, you might use HTMX to create a poll while the resource is not yet ready. So you might say like, I have this job and then every, I don't know, 30 seconds you check and it'll replace itself with like, oh, we're still waiting. And then if it's actually finished, whether it's like success or failure, um, you might return an element that no longer needs to pull because it's like, oh, this is finished. Here's like the link to go look for it. I mean, this is probably more common with what you'll do with HTMX because it's very rare that you'll need to like refresh forever. Now, often we need a little bit more nuance with when we're um, pulling. And so here we're gonna be pulling with back off. And so in higher scale scenarios where we may have lots of pullers, like especially for consumer-based apps or something, um, we may wanna be more cautious about how we do polling. And the reason is that with lots of parallel pollers, we risk overrunning our systems with the load of these polls. Cause you can imagine that what is a poll actually doing? It's checking the server, the server needs to check something else. And so that might be a DB hit or something like that. Um, and so these are all like zombie pullers really, especially if no new information has happened. And if you overload your servers, depending on how your things laid out, that polling might actually affect its ability to finish the stuff. And so now you kind of just have like um, a crashing system. And this is why many retry systems implement back offs like a lot of libraries and stuff do this. And they do this because if you fail once, then the likelihood of you failing again um, is actually often more likely. And so we wanna lower the load that each poller puts on our system by basically making its pull less impactful by often having it pull either not at all, like with a set number of retries or just pull less frequently. So if you're pulling every five seconds, now we want you to pull every 30 seconds instead. Now implementing this in HMX requires a few extra steps like tracking retries and current backoffs and stuff like that. But one of the benefits of this is since it's always re returned server side, and this means that the server is actually rendering this markdown, it's definitely possible to configure front end pullers and often do this in a way that's like, has more control than these, these spas do because theoretically we can change this at runtime and give it increasing delays. So it's a little bit trickier because sending these kinds of parameters to HTMX, um, you would need to somehow have this sent in the URL or maybe send it in like an HX values payload if you were trying to, you know, configure this one by one, um, which, which can be a little finicky because we are working with HTML, but it is definitely possible. And I'm sure in production scenarios, you might actually want to do this uh, more frequently. Next. So I've now been playing with HTMX for around six months and have been very happy with it for building my side projects. It feels like a simple scalable system for building simple web apps as multi-page applications, which is, you know, relatively simple. Have a lot of tools for that, so pretty easy. And very powerful because, you know, I still pause it that most websites are like 80, 90% just like dumb crud and they don't need like really that much dynamism at all. But then when you do need dynamism for like your main thing, HTMX is super easy to just sprinkle in. Um, and so you get a lot of benefit for very little added complexity and work. Hopefully this post helps you along with your next HTMX project, especially those using polling. Now question for you is how are you using HTMX in your projects and what's been the hardest thing for you to do with it? These kinds of things help me figure out like what to explore next um, and especially what, what things you're struggling with uh, for my next guide. If you like this post, you might also like why you should choose HTMX for your next web-based side project and ditch the crufty multi-page application and complex single-page application. What it's like to run HTMX in production, stories from experienced software engineers, um, both the things that they really like about it, but also some of the downsides of HTMX and why you might not want to use it in production. And then finally, uh, how to build simple interactive islands with F-sharp and HTMX, kind of how I think about building with HTMX um, and especially doing this with F-sharp, which is basically how I'm building um, all my apps these days. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.